only just the topping lift while you're... Uh... Yeah. Well, Beverly and I are sailing. Woohoo! <laughs> I mean, so I know we've done a sail because we were in Belfast lot before. But this is the kind of sail you want. It oh. might look very boring on camera. But it's lovely on here. It's <laughs> lovely on here. <laughs> oh, dear. It's just sunny. A, it's sunny. It's a calm sail. The sea state is smooth. 14 knots of wind, a nice little force for. It's, you know, very gentle. Yeah. We are absolutely loving, loving it. it. Right, well, although it's um, mid-April and therefore still quite early in the year, I'm glad to report that the old panels are filling the uh, boat batteries up. We've got about 11 amps flowing into the uh, boat batteries at the minute, which is more than enough for our needs. And um, these uh, flexible panels are doing very, very well for us. And, oh dear, oh dear, there's another plane on approach. <laughs> and um, so... These are enough to keep us going now to the rest for the rest of the year until about September or October. We should have enough daylight and enough sunlight to keep Salty Lass totally topped up with electric. We had wanted to uh, go onto Island's Eye, but we've got two factors against us. First of all, we're under the flight path and the reason we wanted to go is to fly the drone. And obviously you can't fly the drone under a flight path. Uh, the second thing is to do with the birds. Um, they would request you between the birds breeding season not to go on the island just because they want to keep the birds happy. Um, and of course it is bird breeding season now. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we've decided to do is, because uh, we can't go round Lamb Bay, um, unless I become a motorboat. We're going to go down to Dunleary because we've got to pick up some batteries. Um, Beverly and our laptop have decided to go on the blink and we need decent batteries so that we can keep on blogging. Well, we're departing um, Ireland's Eye. I have to say, I thought that the uh, terrier dog had completely disappeared, uh, but it was just where we were anchored. Um, the rock formation looked more like um, the Sphinx to me, but I'm so glad that I can now see the terrier. The Westie. The little Westie. I just, uh, I find it quite heartfelt. Um, but the boys um, just outside Howth are very, very different, with one being very, very conical, whereas the other one has got a lattice work. And uh, when it's very dark, you can hardly see the lattice work, and I'm afraid to say it looks more like a can. Uh, so just be careful of that when it's half light and it's not on.
That was possibly the worst arrival in the history of Solfi Lass. It would certainly be in the running for it. <laughs> and uh, that would help me put these on the right way up. Um, no, it was all going so well. And what happened was when we, when we got in, there was somebody in the pontoon, which we're not used to. We're a well-oiled machine and we have a system. Uh, but at the same time, people helping are great. You don't want to say no, so you do your best. And there was a bit of grit in the system in this particular instance, because what happened was, where I wanted to get off, he was standing right in front of me, so I couldn't get off. And I stood and looked at him. And by the time I realized I should be doing something, the boat had drifted backwards. And when I did get off, I got off on the end of the finger, nearly stepped into the water. And, oh, the boat was over there and all sorts of things were going wrong. And, ah, <sighs> it just goes to show you that even when you think you're well prepared, sometimes you're not. And you can get out of practice a lot quicker than you think. But we're in and at the end of the day no harm was done no boats were damaged um that was it so just one of those things we'll just have to get better well beverly and i are in Dunleary. thank you <laughs> and we came here principally to get some batteries um when we are at anchor, we need the batteries in the laptop to be 100% and they've got down to... Mine had a total of 9% capacity. It couldn't be charged any more than that. Yeah, so for being at anchor and everything like that, which is where we would do our blogs, it's just wasn't... I had, kinda... I had 12 minutes working time. <laughs> Beverly needs a bit longer than 12 minutes to do a blog. Trust me on this. <laughs> um, but... Um, We've only been here a, a couple of minutes and we've already been welcomed by a couple of people, haven't we, Beverly? One mm -hmm. of them was from a yacht club. Mm -hmm. Royal, uh, Royal St George's Yacht Club, if, I believe, if, if, if I've got the name right. Uh, we'll put it down below to make sure we've got it right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've already been out, asked out for drinks. Um, at the end of the day, our journey is about meeting people and um, the more people we can meet and enjoy the company, then brilliant. But also... We've got the replacement batteries. Absolutely! And they work. It is also good, isn't it? It is, it is, it's good. <laughs> been invited down to this uh, very very splendid dinghy yard by Royal St George Yacht Club where we had a lovely evening with the secretary and one of the ex-rear Commodores. Um, it's not a brilliant day for going out sailing. The uh, easterly wind is coming straight in through the entrance and for dinghy sailing today it's not really very very good. But I have to say we had a really nice night and it's a very very impressive setup. I'm uh, quite struck for words to be honest. But uh, I guess it's, we're not going to be able to bring you much dinghy sailing, not with this stuff. So we'll just have a look around the yard and give you a flavour of what the club is like. sea is starting to kick up um, and uh, you can see white caps and lots and lots of rollers so it's not a sailing day for Beverly and I but I tell you now there's lots of intrepid sailors here but they are staying to the outer harbour um, where you can do some uh, maneuvers and um, but they're out on dinghies and I have to say, I say hats off to them, or at least I would do if I had one. Well, this looks a bit serious. What's going on? Well, Beverly and I realised that we had no idea, first of all, where to get the weather reports and then how they were done. Uh, we now know where to get the weather reports and that is at met.ie. 
Um, but what they use is they use the headlands as what the weather is doing around the headlands. So I'm marking them on a bigger from the tourist office in Dutton Leary. From the tourist office in Dun Leary. <laughs> because we can put this up on the bulkhead and um you know we've always got it available but we also have a tab in our book so that we've also got it there. But um so I can swear you've got a tab because you just chucked the paper it. I certainly did, but I've got a tab. But it's also making me aware of where all these various bits are because at the moment I haven't a clue. You don't know, you, you know where slime head, loop head, and isn't head? No. And that's why I'm doing it because at least Beverly knows where these places are because she's she hasn't been the uh, all of the place, but she's uh, holidayed around a lot of this. Cause after all, you did come from. <laughs> Northern Ireland, didn't you, Bev? I did. So uh, at least she knows some of the places where I haven't a clue. So seeing as I've got the least knowledge, that's why I'm doing this. Well, I was very, very happy to uh, receive this bottle of wine from an anonymous um, donor last night. But um, for all you future anonymous donors, do give us a call or come and see us. Okay, fair enough. We would have had to get dressed last night because it was quite late. But, you know, I'm quite willing to put my T-shirt on and uh, talk to you because we love meeting our viewers and our subscribers. Well, I know who it was. Oh, thank goodness for that because I certainly don't. He's written his name on the label. It says Brian McGregor. <laughs> it also has uh, written on it, Long May You Sail. And I share the sentiment. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Absolutely. I have to say, my marking of the chart went so much better when I actually got out of the chart table. The correct tool. <laughs> so what are those? Uh, these are... Um, do you know what? I don't know. Are they just parallelograms? Maybe knows. I call them walking rulers, but I don't know if that's actually their correct name. Well, we can ask the uh, audience the correct name, but the thing is... I could get the right um, latitude and longitude and then I could at least draw a line and then once I got my line, I could then, you know, and I got my position, I could then actually mark it up. But, you know, when you're trying to find an area and you're using this, you're hiding vast amounts of information that you need. So, yes, the walking rulers was the job. I know it's the 25th of April today, but I believe it's got a slightly more important connotation. Yeah, apparently it's well banging day and she is so excited. <laughs> Just don't let her peck holes in the chart. <laughs> uh, right, so apart from that, what's going on? Uh, yeah, we're just going to do our passage plan. Um, and uh, we're going to plan it from Dunleary, which is where we are, all the way down to here um so stay tuned for that